Okay, Mark chapter 9. And he said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. I, I, I don't understand that verse. And the thing is, I would say maybe John with the book of Revelation, but it says them. Stand here, which shall not taste of death. They're not going to die. Till they've seen the kingdom of God come with power. That's the second advent. Because the kingdom of God is not here now, and it doesn't come as the, Jesus comes and sets up the, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. So I don't know what that verse is talking about. So I got a big question mark there. And when you come up to a particular passage in the Bible, you do not understand. Do not be afraid to say, I don't know. And something like this, put a question mark. <clears throat> and maybe God will answer it one day, or maybe he won't. After six days, Jesus taketh with Peter, James, and John, and leads them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. So it's the four of them. And he was transfigured before them. Well, you know, I've got a favorite book of the Bible. I only read one book of the Bible. Okay, well, that's perfectly fine. Let's take what we read, go to Matthew. And I'll show you something. Matthew, you guys search the scriptures. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. So let's look what God says. Mark 17, 1, uh, Matthew 17, 1. After six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up to a high mountain apart. Okay. Luke. Three Gospels. And with the three Gospels, we get an answer. Luke 9, 28. And it came to pass about an eight days after these saints, he took Peter and James and John and went up to a mountain to pray. Back to Mark. Mark chapter 9. After six days, Matthew said seven days. Oh, I forgot what Matthew said. But Luke said after eight days. Well, the answer is the seventh day. Because it doesn't say six days, it says after six days. So it's the seventh day. The seventh day pitches God's rest, the period of rest, which would be to the millennium, verse 1. His raiment became shiny, exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller. That would be like your laundry, your professional launder, on earth can white them. So, in other words, there is no garment that a man in earth can bring to a cleaner that he can make as white as the white of this garment that Jesus is in. And when you look at the book of Revelation, we're not going to. There are white garments given to saints. There, the righteousness of the saints is the, the white garments. All of heaven is going to be dressed in white. There's no dirt. A bright, shiny uh, white. And they appeared unto them, Elias, Elijah, with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus, and another gospel says they're talking about the decease of Jesus. Jesus is checking with, with Elijah as far as the law, I mean, excuse me, as far as the prophets, have I fulfilled everything to this day? To the law, Moses, has everything been fulfilled to this day before I go to the cross? That's what they're talking about. 
And they're talking with Jesus. Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Master, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Well, Moses never made a, a, a tabernacle for himself. Now, Moses made a tabernacle for God. Elijah never had a tabernacle. Neither did he build one. Peter comes up and says, hey, listen, let's we'll bring the Bible up there. Let's build three houses for, for you, Moses, and Elijah, and we'll stay here and we'll live here. This will be our happy home. Peter wants to dwell. Peter always has a love and devotion that's not scriptural many times. Now, another question is, are we going to know others in heaven by name? Well, how did Peter know that was Moses and Elijah? I don't think that they were wearing little name tags. Hello, my name is Moses. Hello, my name is Elijah. I don't think Moses was, was carrying, you know, the, the, the stones of the testimony of the Ten Commandments. I don't think Elijah was calling down, you know, fire from the sky. And how old is Moses? How old is Elijah? That Peter, and then the Bible says they were asleep. They wake up and Peter says, hey, that's Moses, that's Elijah. So we will know each other in heaven. For he wished not what to say, for they were sore afraid. All right, then just keep your mouth shut. But it's, Peter has a love for God. It's just very much like a, a newborn babe in Christ. It's just, you got to be patient with them. No, you don't take that spoon and stick in your ear. No, your oatmeal does not go down in your pants when you sit in the high chair. No, those scissors don't go over there. No, you have to go to sleep. This is not a time to read a book. <laughs> That's Peter. And there was a cloud. And you got to pay attention to clouds in the Bible. These clouds, there's judgment. It's second advent. It's God. The Bible says the second advent is a day of clouds. The rapture, we will meet in the clouds. There came a the cloud overshadowed them, and the voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Now, go to Mark 1. Mark 1, 11. Now, in Mark 9, Jesus is on his way to the cross. Mark 1, 11, he is beginning his ministry. There came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mark 9 says, hear him. Mark 1, I'm pleased with him. Now the disciples are going back to Mark 9. The disciples are going to be sending out in the book of Acts. Verse uh, 16, I mean, chapter 16. So now the thing comes to be, God is speaking to Jesus in the beginning of the ministry that John hears, hey, I'm well pleased with you, son. You're going 30 years. You're going into ministry. And I'm pleased with every step you're doing. Now, it's, it, towards the two or three years left that he's been in the ministry. He's got the 12, he's got the three. Now he's, you better listen to him. Now let me, let me ask you an important question. I'm going to stick my neck out and God can chop it 
and say I'm wrong because maybe I don't know. There's Peter, James, and John up in that mountain, right? All right, let me ask you a question. God tells them to hear Jesus, the beloved son. Does Peter have a book? He has two of them. Does John have a book? He's got five of them. Or epistles. Does James have a book? No, it's James, the brother of Jesus. What? Everywhere in the Bible, Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. He took Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. And you've got John, Peter, and then the brother of Jesus. Well, who is the brother of Jesus? John. James, excuse me. We don't know anything about him. We don't know anything about Jude, but I would think that the three that Jesus called the special ministry would be the three you would find their names in the book. James. I don't know. I don't listen to scholarship and scholars, and maybe sometimes it's my fault. But but I do know one thing. God, the Lord God Almighty says, listen to him. And suddenly, when he looked about, round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only. And that's the only place you can find in the Bible, only Jesus saved, right there. And not in that order, <laughs> with himself. So all of a sudden, boom, Moses and Elijah are gone. <laughs> are they in Israel? Are they in Judah? <clears throat> Are they in Mount Sinai? Where is this mountain? We don't know. It's not given. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them they should tell no man the things which they seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead, which we're reading now. But he says, don't tell anybody down there. Why? They don't believe me. They're going to say pretty soon that they're going to say, crucify him, crucify him. We'll take Barabbas. And the thing is, we, we talked this over and over through Mark. The churches today, they're going to do what they want to do like Israel. They're not going to listen to Jesus. They're not going to listen to the Bible. They're going to do their fun and game. They're going to do their paganism. They're going to do everything outside the Bible, the worldly kind of way. We're going to, they're going to go and tell the people about the church rather than the gospel. And then they expect the revival. Then they speak, expect God to speak to them. Then they expect the wonders of God. And Jesus would be like, Holy Spirit, don't tell them. How come you have more revelation? How come you have more Bible? Now? It's the Holy Spirit and what you do with the Word of God. The moment you change the Word, the moment you disbelieve of the Word, and they did, could not enter in because of disbelief, the moment you do something contrary to the Word of God because you want to, if somebody comes up to you and says, listen, Bible, Bible really does not look good on drinking and smoking. The Bible really sets forth what a what a Christian husband or a Christian woman and or a Christian child should be. And you say, listen, I don't care. I'm going to do what I want. You're in trouble. And you remain in that attitude as far as is God has had enough and okay, fine. Jonah did not die and, and did not go into hell. Okay, your revelation's closed. You're going to subtract and, and, and add from the word of God. Your revelation, a guy wrote me today with, with my new King James. Well, I'm glad you agree with me. I don't agree with you. And he was saying that, you know, because, because New King James took out all the bad 
these and those and, and you know, just updated language. And I that's what I said. That's not what I said. But you know what? That's what he heard. And when I showed you that the King James Bible verse and I showed you the New King James Bible verse and what he said, well, the New King James is better. It's good. It's right. OK. That is what, you know, the hardest thing for God. And you got to think about your family and friends and co-workers and everything. Why are they in the Catholic Church? Because that's what they want. Why are they in the Mormon Church? Because God's given them what they want. Why does that guy go in the root of deception and the root of lies and everything? Because that's what they want. God will give you what you want. Now, you cannot ever say God puts man into hell. No. God only honors your choice. When you enter in hell and you walk by a street preacher, you see a gospel track in a public bathroom, you hear somebody tell, tell you that, but the gospel of Jesus Christ, not church, and you still go on to hell. God only honored your choice. I mean, God gave Adam, hey, don't eat that fruit. Oh, Adam ate the fruit. God told, told them, I want the blood of an animal, and Cain brought the produce section. That's reality of life. Many of the trials and troubles men have is because that's what they want. And you got to realize when you're going out there and you're witnessing, and you're, you're telling people the honest, good truth about the gospel and how Jesus can save and only Jesus save. you got to realize many of the people you're talking to, that's not what they want. You see, they, some want to go to heaven and boast of Look at everything I did. And get to heaven. Well, you know, I deserve to be here more than you and better than what you. That's not what heaven's about. And there's a, there's, there's a lot of Baptists today. You know, when we get to heaven, we got the, we got the greatest preacher of all. Oh, excuse me. Did not Jesus preach? you got the greatest church. Do you realize how many people were in the congregation of the church of the gathering of Moses? You don't compare to nothing in the Bible. And suddenly there was, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only with themselves. Was that a rapture? I don't know. As they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man be risen from the dead. Resurrection. So here it goes again with Peter, James, and John. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die, and I'm coming out of the grave. There it is. See it? And they kept the sayings with, with themselves. Questioning one another what the rising from the dead should mean. Oh, we got a problem now. All right, Moses never raised anybody from the dead. Elijah did. Elisha did. Their own ministry has been raising people from the dead. Remember, he sent them out, he said, you know, rise. Raised them from the dead? Has not Jesus resurrected some of them? Did not Herod believe that that's John the Baptist risen from the dead who I'm killed? So it's not the concept of resurrection you're having a problem with. It's the question the love of Peter just had we read. Oh no, you're not going anywhere, Jesus. So now we see that, you know, what do you mean he's, he's going to be read? And they probably remember what the words of Peter and if I, James and John, look at the fact that because John was, was the, the disciple after Jesus' own heart. 
And here they are again. He's not going to die. My wife had stage four breast cancer. Now, she knew she was going to die, but she kept it from us because she loved us. In the back of my heart, I knew she was going to die. I just didn't want to believe it. I was believing in my heart we're going to have many, many, many years. We were going to live happily ever after in old age. That's the same thing here. That's the same thing with any loved ones. In reality, you know death. Now, you can't say, well, you know, it's the whole question of the resurrection. The resurrection is not a secret. I would assume they've heard it in in Sabbath in uh, the, the synagogues, or would hope it be something that the Jewish people would would know. It's the love of Jesus they have. They don't want him because they're thinking, you know, they're thinking, well, if he dies, that's it. Holy rise, then what happens? Right? Has Jesus revealed to them what happens after the resurrection? No. It's always been, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, and I'm going to rise again. And he does not reveal what's going to happen afterwards. But he does talk about things in the second advent. We just saw that in, chapter, in verse 1. They just saw in verse 1 and 2 and 3, he's coming back. So not only is he, now look, not only is he going to die and he's going to be resurrected, he's coming back. Look at verse 1. I say unto you that there be some of you some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God come in power. Maybe that just happened. Peter, James, and John. I don't know. Wait a minute. The Son of Man coming with power, that means he's going away. So after he dies and, ri and rises from the dead, he's going somewhere where we don't know he is so he comes back. And to change the subject, instead of asking Jesus what he meant, and they could get revelation, and they kept the saying amongst themselves, questioning one another what the rising from the dead should mean, for they asked him, okay, okay, for that, let's take that statement down, I'm not changing it, but Jesus, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? But we don't want to say, Jesus, what, what are you talking about? Because we don't want to look like dummies. Why say the scribes, those in charge of the scriptures, that Elias must first come? Well, you know, wait a minute. If we take it off Jesus and we put it on Elijah, who we just saw, maybe he'll answer us. Slick. Slick is oil. They would have been better to say, well, why did you just say rise from the dead? What else? No, let's look at, let's go back to a lot. Let's change the subject. And when you change the subject, you lost the aspect. There, I've been in churches where there have been preachers. But we're going we're gonna to study this part of the Bible. We're going to look at the life of of the Bible. We're going to look at the person of the Bible. We're going to look at Jesus and or of the Bible. And you get going after three weeks, it dies out and you go into other things. We're going to study, you know, we're going to go through, through the whole entire book, this book of the Bible, and you get to chapter four. Oh, it's repetition. We're going to close it. We're going to go somewhere else. But we did all the Bible. 
We're going to we're going to study we're going to start studying the Ten Commandments. You get to about five, and they're like, you know, everybody's falling asleep. They're not coming. All right, we're going to go do something else. We're going to study the Bible, and I'm going to make myself look good. And then you don't get everywhere you said you were going, but you said it in a kind of way of a of a scholarly way, kind of be that the people just went right over their heads. And somebody who's sitting in the church who's got the scholarly, who's written. The stuff and has the videos like that you can look at it like you didn't you didn't say anything. And the, my main question is: You said where, where did the Bible come from? Where did I never heard Antioch? I didn't hear anything about Alexandria. Huh. And you threw some words out there, you know, minuscule, and you know, <laughs> that sounds so good. What do you say, mascara? Do you say mascara in the Bible? Where's that? Yeah, it's just about painting her face. That would be the VBS or the the special outdoor event we're going to have at the church. If you see some of my pictures on Facebook, I'd like to put the scriptures too. So they're not going to get the revelation of what happens to Jesus after his his resurrection. Because, okay, let's talk about Elias now. They said Elias was going to come. Well, in all actuality, he just did. You just saw him. But there's evidently there's more to it, and there is. There's scripture about Elias coming, and that's Moses and Elijah both showing up, not by name in the book of Revelation, the two heavenly witnesses, that are become enemies of the world where they have Merry Christmas sending off gifts because they died not born. Did you get that one? And they are killed and, and they're resurrected in front of everybody. That's the story of Elias and Moses. And he answered, told him, says, Elias barely cometh first. He did. And restores all things and how it was written of the Son of Man, as in Isaiah, that he must suffer many things and be said it not. In other words, the state of Elias was, here he is, he suffered, he had problems, and then his life became nothing. Well, there was a man named John. He spoke to the, to Herod and said, "You can't have her, your, your brother's wife. Brother's wife, her always got all upset. Would have had him killed, but couldn't. He put him in, put him in jail just to please Honey Pie. Honey Pie's daughter gets up to do the hula and, and do the American image and all that other kind of let's you know let's dance fever and everything like that with her belly button hanging out and her boobs and everything like that. Got everybody all the friends. I'll give you half the kingdom. What do you want? Now, mom, what do you what should I ask? Even though you knew what mom told you to do, we want the head of John the Baptist. We want him dead. John the Baptist gets his head chopped off and then he not. Nah. <laughs> Except for if you read the Bible. What's not? Do you read about John the Baptist in the public schools and the colleges? And do you even read about John the Baptist in, in the Christian schools? When was the last time you heard John the Baptist at your church? And he's talking about that Elias would be John the Baptist. Had Israel believed the Messiah, things would have changed. Where would have been no church age? There would have been the rejection of the Messiah. Then they would have gotten the red heifer, and they would have done what they needed to do as God's repentance of the Messiah being killed. Had a complete national repentance and then Jesus would have died, would have been buried, rose again, gone to the Father. He told Mary, don't touch me, I've been risen to the Father. He goes to the Father, the Father says, job complete, well done, 
well done, pleased with you, my son. Now go establish the king. He would have came back at that point in time, and then boom. And about 33 AD, with a thousand years, well, you would have a seven-year tribulation period, Jacob's trouble, after, after the 33 would have been 40, and at 40, you would have the thousand-year reign. At 1,040, approximately, the earth and everything would have dissolved, and we would be in the new heavens, new earth. I don't know about New Jerusalem. But they rejected John the Baptist. They rejected the Messiah. John the Baptist stays John the Baptist, and he's murdered by Rome. Jesus is murdered by Rome. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come. And they had done unto him whatsoever they listed, whatever they did, and everything like that, as is written of him. So, if you go search the scriptures, you will read about the death of John the Baptist, who is Elias. Elias didn't die. Elias, oh boy, and Enoch never died. They were both raptured. Now, Moses has died. He's going to die again. Elias was raptured. He's coming back and he's going to die. The nation of Israel missed the great opportunity of the transformation that may have been right now. Maybe John the Baptist would show, they would say, hey, that's John, that's going to baptize us, guys. Look at that. It, what just happened? That's Elijah now. But when, when the disciples looked and said that Moses and Elijah are gone, maybe that moment when they looked and said, hey, John the Baptist is Elijah now. I don't know. So what, what happened to the fact that, okay, after Christ is risen, and when he come down with his disciples, saw a great multitude. <laughs> they change the subject, as many churches do. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you. Here he goes again. Easter's pagan. Well, that's been, we're just going to do it. You know, Jesus was not born December 25th. Oh, well, we know that, but, you know, it's... <laughs> If a little man came along and shot arrows right in your heart, you'd be dead. Well, you know, it's his cue. And let me get a big heart and put it over my suit. And we call it a big heart day. I call it big fart day. And I upset the church, right? Because, you know, everybody got in the mail wasted postage. Everybody got this little heart. And you were to bring your heart back. And they put it back on this nice little picture that the, uh, one of the family members drew and all that. And... Mine and my daughter's heart was missing. They had to go make their own to replace me not bringing my heart. <laughs> and then you wonder why Jesus Christ is standing outside the closed door. Yes, Jesus. Hey, Stella, you, you want to come out of that mess? Oh, please. Come on out. Okay, Lord. Let's have time together. 